Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we are diving into the final episode of End of the World with You, episode eight. It has been quite a journey, and we've kind of raced to the finish line over like the last two or three days. Um, I've just I meant to dive into like one episode, and one episode turned into three episodes one day, and then that turned into this me finishing the series in this session so like here we go um yeah i'm very interested to see just how they wrap all this up and is sweet boy going to end up being the earth savior is he going to be the earth's greatest hero like i've been hypothesizing or has all that just been nonsense and everyone's gonna be dead i don't know we got 24 minutes left so let's let's see It's fine outside. Look at you. Huh? They're just gonna show me white and that's gonna be the end. <laughs> okay, okay, so we left it kind of sort of open-ended depending on how you want to interpret that scene before the last with um yuma shirtless for whatever reason and just blowing the meteor away whether you choose to interpret that as a dream that that sumi was having or the actual way things worked out, then you will have two different outlooks on how the series ended. Um, I'm going to choose to believe, based off of the things that we saw in the series, that that little sequence was fact, comical fact, but fact, and that he did in fact blow the comet away, or the meteor away, whether that was him mentally manifesting that sort of like light larger than life essence of him to blow it away or whether that was just him consciously okay these are my powers and whew. either way i'm choosing to believe that and that the world is fine so that ritsu and matsumi can continue living their lives now that they've found each other, rekindled things, made amends, and cleared up any sort of complications in their, the dynamic of their relationship. Now that they've reached this really beautiful place that they're at right now, I would like them to have more time together to enjoy that. So I'm going to choose to believe that the world did not end. Now, I don't know if I feel like lots of the series I react to were based on some sort of like manga or graphic novel. So I don't know if that's the case for this one as well. And if it was, if the ending had more details um, and gave a more definitive answer, like this is what happened. I don't know. I might have to check it out someday if it does exist. But yeah, I'm going to choose to believe that the world was saved. Because um, I feel like, well... I was gonna say, I feel like if the world wasn't saved, they set their alarm for the time of impact. So that point, the meteor would have already hit Earth. And I feel like a lot of damage would have already been done. I don't remember where exactly on the planet it was supposed to impact. So maybe this location of impact wasn't close enough to them for them to get, you know, feel it yet. But like the after effects, the aftershock and whatnot should be enough, to, you know, should travel through the planet pretty quickly um for something that size um so i feel like if it had hit there would have been some some semblance of damage windows blown out them not existing um everything being burned to a crisp like something but again maybe it hadn't reached them yet but i'm choosing to believe that it did not the meteor did not hit at all. Um, but as far as everything leading up to the meteor, I feel like there was a lot of great 
closure for these characters where if the world did end at the end of this episode they all felt like their arcs were completed in a sense at least the the arcs we touched on here um so yuma got a lot of closure when it came to the idol and just I don't know, the sense of helplessness, I guess, he felt leading up to, you know, where we came in with him at the series. Um, And everyone, everyone of our main characters just had this sense of hope. By the end of the episode, they were hopeful, like, okay, we'll see, I'll see you soon, let's meet up again later, the world's not gonna end, we manifested it, it's fine, everything's fine. So they all genuinely felt like they had a desire to live, a zest for life, and an excitement to see, oh, see what else life has in store for them. So I like how they wrapped up all of these emotional, very emotional um, plot points. And again, we had Yuma showcasing some sort of power unintentionally. I, at least I believe unintentionally, when the drunks up there were actually dropping the bottle of alcohol and it was gonna crack um, Megura, Meguru in the head. Why she didn't just like move out of the way? I don't know, but it was gonna crack her in the head. So then he runs over to tackle her to get her out of the way and it just, everything, time just like slowed down and it just froze in the air and then it fell and Matsumi's like, you saw that, right? And after they dropped him off, they're like, maybe he is some sort of miracle boy or something. Which, if he if he is, is and he is conscious of it, to me, that makes like some semblance of sense why he didn't want them to drop him off at his house, this, that, and the other. Because maybe he didn't have a house. Maybe he is just this spiritual being out here testing humanity. Um... And this was, although I don't know if that's the case, because they did spend a lot of times with him being hella emotional and lots of times with him crying and just like going through this big emotional arc and whatnot. So I don't know that he was necessarily this big all knowing cosmic force, but I don't know. I feel like he if he did have some sort of cosmic level powers, he was not aware of them, or if he was aware of them, he was not fully in control of them, but I I feel like he was not aware of them. There were too many things that seemed to just happen by happenstance versus him like being in control of what's happening. So I don't know, I don't know completely what his deal was but that's some of the fun of this series there's a lot of the storylines had this nice definitive closing part but there's a lot of stuff that's just left kind of open-ended questions that don't necessarily bother me that they're unanswered like it doesn't make the story bad or it doesn't leave me with like a plot hole or something it's just hmm, the story could go this way or it could go this way i don't really know but it's still enjoyable nonetheless um, Matsumi and Ritsu, they like to fuck. <laughs> Lord. Um, they said, you know, what? one more time. Since the world is ending, let's just give the old college try. One, two, seventeen more times. While, while we still have the stamina. Lord, they just were getting it in and getting it in. And like I said in that moment, these Japanese series, because I remember also reacting to the pornographer, which reminds me I got to go back and react to those. I think there's a sequel series and a prequel series, I think, or it might have been two sequel series. I don't remember. I got to go back and brush up on that series and react to those other parts. But these Japanese series don't, they don't stray away from the sexy time shenanigans. If I were in... A Thai series or, well, yeah, I was going to say, or a Filipino series, but no, if I were in a Thai series, I feel like we might have some of those same interactions, but we wouldn't be hearing, 
and all the sounds and this, that, the other, and all the moaning and groaning, we might hear some of that lightly in the background with like this gorgeous soundtrack. So it's just this gorgeous moment. Um, in the Filipino series, I feel like um, a lot of the times there's a comedic element. So there might be some of that same sort of like romantic music what uh, happening in the background and we don't necessarily see like thrust thrust and all this kind of stuff we see um like shadows and whatnot but if we do see like the thrust thrust it's usually played off for like some comedic effect um but yeah here in japan china doesn't show you anything you you, you don't get a handshake you don't get nothing over in china um Taiwan, they, Taiwan, can, they can they can give you some of the stuff too, but they usually have some like really pretty soundtracks playing underneath it too. But yeah, over here in Japan, they're just like, fuck your soundtrack. You gonna listen to me moan and get it from behind for the next three and a half minutes. So you you just buckle up, Buttercup. And I'm like, Lord, these sounds I'm hearing, my innocent ears can't be hearing all this. Like I already, like I uploaded my preview cut of episode two to youtube a few days ago and i was like i don't know if i can include this first scene so i i tried to do some creative editing where i would make the screen disappear make it reappear so it's like you're not showing the thing you can kind of hear some of the stuff and you know you'd get little glimpses here there shrink things and all that kind of stuff so i'm like okay try that and then it immediately got flagged when YouTube's like, mm, this may not be suitable for most advertisers. So I'm like, mm, I don't know if I can put this one on there. But then I, you know, I had them, I submitted a review. I was like, hey, can you review this? And then it got manually reviewed. And it's like, oh yeah, no, this is fine. It's suitable for all the advertisers. I'm like, okay. I didn't think I was going to pass that review, but I took a shot in the dark, just like with um, submitting like a, whenever you get a copyright claim and you submit a dispute it's like i never really know if the dispute's gonna go through or not or if they're just gonna be like nah no this is my stuff you can't use it but you know i just take a shot in the dark and hope for the best so that's what i did with the review and it worked out i'm like okay cool but i don't know if i can push my luck with this episode so <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see i mean by the time you see this on youtube it you know the series will have been done so if i if you saw anything on youtube then i i was successful yay um but yeah, they 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 like to get it in. They they and they they're good at it. They apparently they're very compatible at getting it in. So more power to them. Um, Matsumi was like, I would like it right here, right now. So if you could please touch me in this car, that'd be great. And Ritsu was like, Um, what about your leg? Doesn't it hurt? Isn't it cramped? And he's like, Listen, bitch, we're potentially dying tomorrow. I, I would like you to just dislocate my leg straight from the hip socket just put it behind my head just rip rip my leg out from just I, I don't need it anymore break it break whatever you need to i need you to get all up in this good good okay please and thank you science and sailor matsumi um but Ritu was like mm, i don't i just don't want to push you so instead i'm gonna make you squirm and make you feel things in this car but when we get back to that back to your hotel your your apartment don't worry i'm gonna lay it on you i'm gonna put it down good and he did he was a man of his word so you know papa bless um yeah but all in all it was an enjoyable little series i'm gonna miss seeing those cheekbones on my screen because god they were beautiful and so much, so much Miss Men in underwear this entire series since episode one, since like the first scene of episode one, we just had men in underwear. And I'm like, okay, I love this. Um, yeah, I enjoy this. This definitely has easy rewatchability to it, um, especially since it's so short. So yeah, I enjoyed this. Um, I don't remember which one of my patrons recommended this one to me, but thank you for, actually, let me go hop on my list and see real quick uh, but yeah i thoroughly enjoyed this and it was a fun little trip down let's see a patreon quest enter the world 
That one was sent to me by Slytherin Wolf. Oh, my babies, love you. I love this series. Thank you, babies, for the recommendation. Um, you guys have not led me astray, but um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, joining me on Patreon, and joining me throughout this journey. I can't wait to see what else we've got in store. I'm in the middle of like 18 series right now, so who knows what else I'm going to decide to just dive into next because Topher is liable to just dive into a random ass series because that's what that's what I do from time to time. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications to be notified when all my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love you. Time we had